Captain James Holden sat rigidly in the defendant's chair, staring straight ahead as the tribunal filed into the chamber. The cavernous courtroom was packed with onlookers, mostly aliens who had come to watch humanity put one of its own military leaders on trial. Holden felt their eyes boring into him, their judgment and disdain palpable across the divide, separating the raised dais from the gallery seats. He didn't care. Let them judge all they want. He'd do it all again in a heartbeat if it meant saving human lives. Captain James Holden, the chief adjudicator, an elderly Arconian, began. You stand accused of violating intergalactic rules of engagement, specifically Article 27, concerning the ethical treatment of surrendering enemy combatants. How do you plead? Holden rose calmly to his feet. Not guilty, he stated, loud and clear. Murmurs rippled through the crowded stands. Holden spotted a few humans seated towards the back, staring at him stone-faced. The rest of the audience flickered and chattered amongst themselves in various alien tongues, no doubt eager to watch the traitorous human get convicted. Maybe he was a traitor to their concept of civility, but never to humanity. Very well. The adjudicator adjusted his spectacles and consulted his notes. Please recount for this tribunal the events that led you to commit these alleged violations. We will reserve questions until the end. Holden nodded. He had known this day would come eventually, though he had hoped humanity's role in winning the war would grant him some grace. Taking a breath, he began his testimony in the same crisp, commanding voice he'd used on the bridge of his ship. When the Zarlaks declared war on humanity, our military leaders knew we were at a grave disadvantage. Their technology far exceeded anything we had developed. Our weapons could barely penetrate their shields, while their plasma cannons obliterated our ships with a single shot. He lifted his chin, defiant. But we couldn't just surrender and allow them to enslave our people. So we came up with a desperate last-ditch strategy to level the playing field. We targeted their religious leadership, the exalted ones, with stealth attacks and assassinations. For the Zarlax, killing an exalted one was a desecration tantamount to war crimes, but it was our only option to destabilize their chain of command. Holden paused, maintaining his composure against the outraged murmurs. I was tasked with leading these covert operations against the Zarlax holy order. Yes, I killed their religious leaders to undermine their military. Yes, I committed what they viewed as atrocities, because it was the only way to survive their extermination campaign against my people. And I will. Never apologize for ensuring our right to exist. His voice rang through the courtroom, silencing the crowd. He made deliberate eye contact with the Zarlax observers, seated towards the front, their tentacled faces writhing in barely contained fury. The adjudicator banged his gavel. While we understand the circumstances that motivated these actions, they clearly violated intergalactic law. Please continue your account, Captain. Holden clenched his jaw. Of course they didn't understand. How could they? Only humans knew how close they'd come to annihilation before he'd taken desperate measures. After two years of covert attacks, the Zarlaks were in disarray, he continued. Their holy order was decimated, their military command structure fractured. That's when they finally called for a ceasefire and open negotiations to end the war. He began pacing slowly in front of the tribunal, hands clasped behind his back. But I didn't trust them. All of their concessions seemed designed to lull us into complacency while they secretly regrouped and replenished their forces. I had to do something to ensure humanity's survival before they stabbed us in the back. Holden stopped and looked the adjudicator straight in the eye. So when a Zarlax fleet formally surrendered to my ship, I ordered them exterminated, every last one. The courtroom exploded into shocked outcries. The adjudicator slammed his gavel repeatedly, shouting for order. Holden remained rigidly at attention, letting their condemnation wash over him. You murdered 50,000 surrendering soldiers in cold blood? The adjudicator asked, appalled. I neutralized an existential threat to humanity's existence. 
and I won't insult your intelligence by claiming otherwise. Holden kept his voice cool, clinical, like he was giving a routine status report, instead of confessing to xenocide. You cannot justify such an atrocity, Captain, no matter the circumstances. Can't I? Holden took a step towards the dais, impassioned urgency creeping into his tone for the first time. Do you think any human captain would hesitate to do the same, if it meant saving their people from annihilation? We will do whatever it takes to survive, no matter how horrifying you claim our tactics to be. You either couldn't stomach the ugly necessities of war, or were fortunate enough never to face an enemy who wouldn't stop until every man, woman, and child lay dead at their feet. He surveyed the stunned courtroom, letting the uncomfortable truth sink in. So judge me if you must. Call me a war criminal, a monster, a murderer without honor. Say I violated some abstract moral code you hold dear, all comfortably removed from the brutal life or death realities of the battlefield. It doesn't change the truth. Holden straightened to his full height. I did my duty for humanity, and I have nothing to be ashamed of. His concluding words echoed through the silent chamber. He remained rigidly at attention, awaiting the inevitable condemnation. All around him, aliens shouted and protested, but their outrage slipped past him unheeded. Their opinions didn't matter. The gavel cracked like a thunderclap. Order. This tribunal will have order. The aged adjudicator glared until the crowd quieted. With a heavy sigh, he turned back to Holden. While we cannot condone your actions, it is pointless to judge the inappropriate tactics of a primitive, inferior race. Holden bristled, but the adjudicator continued. You were clearly outmatched against a superior enemy. Desperate times call for desperate measures, however regrettable. Muttering broke out among the crowd, but this time Holden discerned a few human voices rising in his defense. So this prejudiced tribunal would patronizingly excuse his war crimes as the panicked flailing of a lesser race. It rankled his pride, but he supposed it meant his reckless gamble had paid off. Humanity would survive, untainted by his stained legacy. This tribunal therefore finds you, Captain James Holden, not guilty by virtue of human ignorance and weakness. The adjudicator's gravelly voice conveyed his distaste at the ruling. You are free to go with the recommendation that humanity properly educate its military forces in advanced ethics before participating further in intergalactic affairs. That won't be necessary. Every eye in the courtroom turned toward the source of the calm female voice. An older woman in an immaculately pressed naval uniform stood up from the human contingent in the gallery. Holding herself with ramrod straight dignity, she descended to the courtroom floor and came to attention before the tribunal. Vice Admiral Joanne Leung, head of the United Earth Combined Forces. She introduced herself crisply. With all due respect, this tribunal has no authority to dictate how humanity educates its military. The adjudicator's eyebrows rose. No offense was intended, Admiral. We merely wish to prevent further unfortunate incidents resulting from humanity's moral deficiencies. How noble of you, Leong replied, voice dry. But there's no need for concern. Captain Holden's actions represent no human deficiencies. In fact, he exemplifies the highest virtues of sacrifice and loyalty in our military culture. Her blunt words shocked the tribunal into silence. She turned to fix Holden with an intense stare. What he did was abhorrent, but it saved uncounted human lives. I've reviewed the classified reports on the Zarlacc's capabilities. They would have exterminated us after luring us into complacency with false peace negotiations. The captain made a sole, crushing decision to sacrifice tens of thousands so that billions more could live. Solemn acknowledgement passed between them. Then Leung stepped forward and crisply rendered a salute. Captain, on behalf of humanity and the United Earth Combined Forces, thank you. Holden swallowed the tightness in his throat and returned the salute. After an endless moment, Lung stepped back, 
leaving him lightheaded with relief. They understood. No matter his sins, ultimately, they understood. Lung turned back to the stunned adjudicators. Any further questions? The Arconian slowly removed his spectacles, regarding her with weary resignation. No, Admiral, it seems you have everything. Well in hand. Good. She nodded, then cast a stern look over the murmuring spectators. And let this be a lesson to all. We humans have spent centuries mired in divisive moral philosophies and paid dearly for such luxuries. But the captain's sacrifices taught us this. Lung's voice hardened. United, we survive. Divided, we fall. We will do whatever it takes to endure. Together. No matter the cost. The undertone of warning resonated through the chamber. Holden watched the crowd grow perfectly still, hanging on the Admiral's final words. Tread carefully with humanity, for we understand the full measure of duty now, and we will never again allow our survival to be threatened. With that, she turned sharply on her heel and marched down the aisle, head high. Before following, Holden paused to meet the adjudicator's troubled gaze. A parting message needed no words. The message that no enemy, within or beyond their world, would ever divide humanity again. Humanity would no longer be judged weak. Humanity would be feared. Satisfied the message was received, Captain James Holden walked from the silent courtroom into a secure future bought by blood. Finally, without shame. Humanity first, last, and always.